Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here, welcome back to Gen Sense. I think it's time that I go full Zuckerberg here, full Steve Jobs. Just from this point forward, the only piece of clothing that I have in my entire wardrobe is a plain black V-neck. I'll make it way easy to do every single video, just this, this is it. Am I actually gonna do that? Probably not, but none of that matters. Today, what we're doing is we're talking about 10 different fragrances that will make a statement without you even saying a word. So we are gonna have a little bit more of a lean toward those warmer fragrances, those spicier fragrances, those richer fragrances, but there are a couple, a few different fresh ones in here too. We have niche, we have designer, little something for everybody. Let's check these out. I will have these linked in the description below. Feel free to check them out down there. Also, friendly reminder, my fragrances, Jet Black Enigma, Terra Nova, and Blue Ridge are at every single Perfume Mania, every single fragrance outlet in the country. Check them out if you got one nearby. Or alternatively, check them out at Michael Malol's website, linked in the description, code GENTSENSE for 20% off. And I am working on new ones right now. I have like 14 different submissions right now that I'm working through, trying to whittle them down. It's a whole thing, but uh, it doesn't matter. All right, fragrance time. Let's do it. The way I said that reminded me garbage day. Garbage day. Anybody out there know what I'm talking about? If you do, hit me with the garbage day in the comments. Armani code Eau de Parfum is the first fragrance, of course, from Giorgio Armani, which this one I'm sure at some point in the not too distant future is going to be re-released into those new style of Armani code bottles. What's better, the older style Vermont code bottles or the newer style, which I guess this is actually like the middle style really, because they added this little, this little black piece here, little accent piece. They didn't used to have those back in the earlier days of code and the earlier flankers, but I digress. This one has lavender, tonka, and suede, extremely classy, but at the same time, very sexy. A great fragrance for a night out. Great fragrance as just about all Armani code fragrances are for pulling positive attention. Refined, alluring, and sexy. Armani code Eau de Parfum. From there, we hop over to Paco Rabanne, more specifically their Invictus line of fragrances, which is a house and a line both well known for sweetness, really ramping that sweetness up. The fragrance is Invictus Victory. And the new one, actually, Invictus Victory Elixir. Mmm, more elixirs. That one I like too. Lemon, lavender, and vanilla. Some of the notes in this fragrance. And it actually has a little bit of a similarity to Pure Excess or Pure Excess Night, also by Paco Rabanne. And <laughs> some of those getting hard to find, Pure Excess Night. Uh, discontinuation city. But Invictus Victory, you can still locate this one very easily, thankfully. Love the way this one smells. Bold, but at the same time, very sweet. It is a fragrance that to a lot of people is kind of striking, really grabs their attention and holds it. A big compliment puller, love this. From there, let's move to something more affordable, something that's not gonna dent the pocketbook quite as heavily. And I noticed looking at these fragrances here, a lot of them are in darker bottles, matching the aesthetic. So this one, as I said, very affordable discounters. I've actually seen a 50 mil of this go for I think in the $20 range from a lot of discounters, it's next to nothing. They're giving it away. Icon Elite from Dunhill. So you're gonna get a little cardamom off the top here, a nice little sweet, spicy blast initially, and as it dries down, it becomes very much a woody, masculine scent. Vetiver and ebony wood, some of the notes in the fragrance here. It has a, a great, sophisticated edge. You know, it's a fragrance that in the cooler months, you can get a lot of use out of this, a bunch of versatility. And really, beginning of spring, and into fall, it works perfectly as well. It is not quite as heavy as you would expect. Well, the bottle is, but the fragrance itself, I mean, is not quite as heavy as you'd expect. The cap doesn't want to stay on very well. I command you to stay. I command you to stay. Mm, I ask you nicely to stay? Yeah, that'll do it. That's a lesson right there. But anyway, the bottle, all black. The fragrance named Elite. You look at the note breakdown, a lot of notes that you would think are a little heavier, but it's actually more moderate 
in terms of performance for me, but that's fine. Still gets the job done, and at the price point, it's a steal. Okay, now this next one, real nice, very rich. This one is a statement maker. Now, if you would say that the Dunhill Elite is, is very nice, but maybe it's not quite unique enough for you, or maybe uh, Invictus Victory, the way that the sweetness is there just doesn't work for you. This thing right here, this will set you apart. It is Costume National Ohm Parfum. I love the way that this smells. Like this is a statement maker. This is a fragrance that will boost your confidence. It does have a good amount of sweetness, but it's done in a different way. It's almost like, um, like spiced reduced fruits, almost how it comes across. You have a good amount of spices in here, cinnamon, cardamom. You have, as it dries down, some resins, this ambery sort of feel. The quality is very good. It's just a killer fragrance. This stuff is fantastic. Now it does have more of a unique feel, as I said. So if you like to play it safe with your fragrances, I don't think that this is like crazy hard to pull off or anything, but it's not as safe as the last three we've talked about. So keep that in mind. Now this next one is, this next one is about as safe as you can get. And it is a niche fragrance, a pricey one. Uh, one of the priciest of this whole bunch. And it's in a blue bottle. And you know how it is. You get that blue bottle, you know that you're in for something just easy going. The number of fragrances that come in blue bottles and have that blue aesthetic to them that are challenging and, and crazy hard to pull off, minuscule, minuscule. Fragrance is from Raja Parfum. It is, of course, Elysium Parfum Cologne. A ton of notes, you know how it goes. Raja Parfum giving you every note in the book. It has a lot of citrus, it's got florals, it's got fresh spices, it's got woods, it's sparkly, it's vibrant, it's effervescent off the top. It is essentially a luxury or luxurious blue scent made to be used anywhere, anytime. Now I would say if you like Elysium, there is the Parfum, and that is going to take this DNA and just ramp it up a bit more as far as the quality goes. And between the two, all things being equal, I would take the Parfum. I think that one's a little bit better, but as far as bang for your buck goes, this one's a better choice. Let's keep it blue. We're going from niche blue to designer blue, but I don't think you're really losing too much from the last to this one. It's Bleu de Chanel Parfum. So you still have that sophistication, that elegance with Bleu de Chanel Parfum. And actually a lot of people may say that Bleu de Chanel Parfum is a little bit more elegant and refined than even Elysium. It's more of an evening kind of blue fragrance, really. It's grown up a little bit, but it still has that compliment factor, which you would expect from a Bleu de Chanel. It oozes charm and sophistication. Great fragrance, not overpowering, overbearing, but still has enough performance to last through the evening. Good stuff. We're gonna swing back to another fresh one and a big hit after this one. But for now, I would say the biggest performer easily of all the fragrances here today, Initio's Oud for Greatness with the good old Illuminati confirmed uh, front there. It's watching you. Ooh. Oud, saffron, and lavender, some of the notes in the fragrance, it is strong. It's quite strong. When you spray this on, it projects heavily without care of anyone around you. Doesn't matter what your surroundings are, this thing is coming for them in the night. So you gotta be aware of that. You gotta know where you're going, what you're doing, et cetera, et cetera, and how much of this to spray. You gotta know how well it works for you, how much it projects. Because whereas with Elysium or Code Eau de Parfum or Bleu de Chanel Parfum, you go a little bit heavy on those, ah, no big deal. People will just smell you a little better, but they're still gonna really like it. This one, you go too heavy, you're gonna have children crying. and You don't wanna be a monster. It's a very distinctive scent. Once you get the feel for Oud for Greatness, you can pick this up like that from a lineup of fragrances. Yes, there are scents that have come out that emulate it, clones, and uh, actually 
apart from Stamarly <laughs> that smells a bit close to it. But still, this is one of those fragrances that set a DNA in stone, a, a style, a type of fragrance in stone. And so this one, when you smell it and other things like it, you'll be like, oh, okay, that's the whole Oud for Greatness style. Kind of like there's a whole Aventus style of fragrances and Baccarat Rouge 540 style of fragrances. Thankfully, Oud for Greatness isn't played out as much as those at this point, but it's the same general idea where you get something that's a big hit and people take notice and then blah, a whole bunch of different versions of it. Let's style it back, okay? Let, let's bring it fresher. Let's ramp it down a little bit. But we're gonna keep it very classy here with Bottega Veneta's Illusione. This one has citrus, good amount of lemon in there, as well as fur and vetiver. This is a fragrance that's at both times modern and classy while being also kind of a throwback style. Great daytime scent gentlemanly, of course. And it's a fragrance that's going to appeal more to guys probably middle-aged and older. Because while it does have that citrus off the top, this is not that type of citrus that's going to be heavy-handed with the sweetness. It's gonna be a little bit brighter, maybe you would say a little sharper than citrus in a lot of other designer scents. Still though, I think it's very well done and a great reach for springtime and fall. Oh, hype monster up next, a big hype beast from Maison Martin Margiela replica line, Jazz Club. Sweet, boozy, warm, sensual, alluring, all of those things. And yeah, it's got a little tiny touch of that smoke from the tobacco in here, but thankfully not overdone because for a lot of people, you put too much smokiness, too much of that animalic feel into a fragrance, it just kills the whole thing off. With this one, they keep it more on the sweet and warm side of things and just give you little tinges, little nuances of those other facets so that it makes it a little more interesting to smell, but it still keeps the mass appeal, which is, of course, one of the reasons that Jazz Club is pretty much the most popular one from this whole house, this whole line. So great scent, especially for evening wear when you're really wanting to make a statement. All right, last one back in the designer realm, but a lesser known designer fragrance when you compare it to, you know, Paco Rabanne and Giorgio Armani and Chanel. It is This Is Him from Zadig and Voltaire, or Zadig and Voltaire. Hmm. It's got a little bit of an edge to it, which I guess you would expect looking at the bottle where it looks like it's been kind of broken off here and the male version of the fragrance fits together with the female version. You can just slide them together like two bookends. And while this is not a massive fragrance when you compare it to these other big dogs here, it has gotten its fair share of love in the fragrance world, and for good reason. I mean, you can pick this up at discounters for a fair price. You know, it's not crazy expensive or anything. Got a huge perfumer behind it, Natalie Lorson, so it has that going for it. Grapefruit, incense, sandalwood, some of the notes in the fragrance. The opening is not like a big blast of grapefruit, but it kind of takes you by the hand a little bit, leads you into the mid and the dry down. It's got a nice creamy woodiness from the sandalwood, of course, and then that incense permeates throughout. A little powdery, but offset with a, a little tinge of sweetness. It's a great kind of sexy, mysterious fragrance for the cooler months. And this one wraps this list up. So there we have it, my friends, 10 fragrances that will help you make a statement without actually making a statement. Thank you all for hanging with me. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.